Cyborg 2020's charity partner is Boston-based Dream Big, which empowers girls from underserved communities through sport and physical activities to contribute positively to their health, education and well-being. Cybos is launching the Dream Big Challenge, supported by the Cybos community, to buy 100 pairs of sneakers, 100 basketballs, and 100 uniform kits for girls and young women from economically disadvantaged communities. Well, the Cybos community is also invited to join a series of health and well-being sessions, which is taking place during Cybos. And every morning, the day's conference is opening with a short session from a well-being expert. And I'm delighted to say that Dream Big's founder and CEO, Linda Driscoll, now joins us live from Boston. Linda, welcome to Cybos. Hello. Hi. Tell Thank us about... Thank you, and we miss you all. We wish you were here. We wish we were with oh, you as well, absolutely. but you know what? We, we, we've got the virtual connection, and that's just as good. I mean, look, tell us about Dream Big. What does it do, and how would you describe the charity's mission? So Dream Big works to um, break down the economic barrier that prevents girls and young women from low-income situations from participating in sports and physical activities that contribute to their health, their education, and their overall well-being. And our mission is to empower them, is to help girls and young women from low-income situations to achieve their dreams by providing them with the equipment, sports attire, program and college showcase fees, and leadership training needed for them to participate they contribute to all of those things. Linda, tell us about the moment you came up with Dream Big. You know, I was sitting in a, um, in a meeting with a, college, a high school girls basketball coach, and she was telling me about our girls team, and she was saying how badly they needed uniforms. So I asked her the question of what were they wearing now, and her answer was this. It was that they would play their games following the boys' games. They would, boys would go in the locker room, take off the uniforms, and the girls had to put them on. And being a little bit of a germaphobe myself, I uh, couldn't imagine that and drove home thinking that I knew 100 people that would buy them uniforms had they known the situation and spent probably the next six months, um, you know, interviewing coaches and principals and teachers and asking them if this was a reality. And it was really as simple as girls now having access and or the funds to purchase simple things like $15 shin guards that were canceling games in urban communities. Linda, what does taking part in sports do for a girl or a young woman? And why do you see that as so extremely important for them? You know, um, there, we have the knowledge that girls that participate in sports are more likely to stay in high school, less likely, I mean, more likely to go to college, less likely to have teen pregnancies, have increased self-esteem, and that's on top of obviously the, all of the benefits of, of maintaining a healthy and active life on a daily basis. Um, so there's just so many benefits. And when we're young, we don't really think about when we play on a team, it's because we want to be with our friends and have fun playing a game. And it's only later in life that we realize that those off the field benefits of participating in sports, like working as a team when you're in a, a meeting in, a, in your career or um, other things like that, that become so much more important to the benefit of participating in sports. Linda, uh, share with us uh, what this partnership with the Cybos community could, could help you during these difficult times. Well, as, as we all know, 2020 has been a, a difficult year for, for everybody, pretty much. Um, and especially, uh, you know, children and youth throughout, throughout the world. And so for us, you know, this would be really important because a, a lot of nonprofit special events have been canceled due to the pandemic. Um, and this brings us the funds we need to give um, girls and young women the equipment they need to even stay home and stay safe, but still maintain activities. Um, over the past month, we've distributed over $150,000 worth of equipment and sports attire to girls and young women throughout urban communities. And it really has, as they send us videos back, it's really helped them to maintain activities, even if it's out in their park in their driveway or on the sidewalk. Um, it's given them the opportunity to stay active at a time where their, health, their physical health as well as their mental health is really important. I'm sure that there are some remarkable stories that you've encountered in the time that you've been running the charity, but what are the three big ones that really stand out for you, that really capture the essence of what the charity is all about? You know, there, there are millions of stories. I think back to our very first equipment grant, um, and it's an athlete that stayed that has stayed involved with us for a long time. And she used to show up early to practice 
to get access to a box of used cleats that her coach would bring to the field. And she had a pair on one day that were somewhat duct taped together because they were a little bit too big on her. And she tells the story of her running down the field and it was muddy out. And so next thing she knew her foot was really wet because it had actually come out of the cleat. It was so big on her. Um, and, you know, it was it meant so much to us to be able to distribute brand new cleats to everyone on her team the next week. Um, and she tells the story that the boys were really jealous of uh, of, her, of the girls all getting new cleats. Um, and, you know, there's also a, a social worker call where um, she basically said she just met with a mom and her daughter, who was a senior in high school, was going to drop out of high school because she was too embarrassed to show up to school to tell her teammates and her coach that her mom couldn't afford a pair, a simple pair of cleats or shin guards that she needed to practice. And we showed up the next day at the mom's work and gave her not only the cleats and the shin guards, but also gave her over several hundred dollars worth of brand new sports attire. Um, you know, a, there's an honor roll student who was a senior in high school whose family lost their home when she was a senior and she was living in a homeless shelter and all she wanted was a pair of volleyball sneakers to be able to maintain being on a team. And that becomes so important because the team actually gave her a support system. It gave her structure to her day where she didn't really have that when she went home at night. Um, so there's just so many amazing stories that, that I could go on for hours, but I won't. So that's, that's pretty much a, a three that are amazing to us. Linda, you've really, you've really answered my next question about people you stay in touch with uh, and success stories from the program. But it must be incredibly rewarding for you to see these people come back and be able to talk about the difference that you guys have made in their lives. Yeah, we stay, we stay in touch with so many athletes, or I should say they stay in touch with us as well. Um, you know, we give college showcase scholarships so that athletes can travel throughout the country in middle school and high school to be able to be seen and recruited. Um, and so many of those athletes are now participating on, you know, D1, D2, and D3 sports teams throughout the country. And it is so wonderful to see them come home on college breaks and come back and visit us. Um, you know, where they may not have been able to go to college had they not received either the financial aid or a full scholarship that they, they received after attending these college showcases. Um, we also have our very first inspirational scholarship winner who is serving on the front line right now as a registered nurse um, as a, in, throughout the pandemic, um, you know, at Mass General Hospital. And she has worked at our office. She's presented at our leadership conference. I mean, she really has been amazing. And it's just wonderful to see so much of this. I mean, Linda, these are really amazing stories. And sadly, we, we don't have the time to look at some more. But congratulations in what you've achieved in 10 years. And uh, good luck for the 10 years or well, the next 10 years to come in the story. Thank you so much. That was Linda Driscoll, the founder and CEO of Dream Big. And we must stress, just head over to cyboss.com for more information about the Dream Big Challenge. Uh, donations can start from as little as $10 and they do make a huge difference.